What's good, Greg Gang? We're here today. Today's video, it's gonna be packed, okay? So first things first, I was going through some mail, and you know, a few videos ago I showed this, but my buddy Kevin sent me this giant bag of stuff, and today I'm gonna reveal what was in it. Also in the mail, Larry Whitson sent me this package straight from Cabela's, and let me show you what's in it. Now guys, this is pretty awesome if you ask me. Boom. We got small game heads for my boat. So in this video, we're gonna be one, checking the trail cameras. Is that a squirrel on her butt? Two, figuring out what's in this bag. Wow. And three, shooting my bow and testing out those small game heads. So first, let's go check the trail cameras, and as soon as we're done with that, we'll see what's in this big bag, and we'll, you know, figure it out. I don't know. And then we'll shoot our bow and we'll do it. Oh! Okay, and here we are to the trail camera. To be completely honest, there's a doe standing right there, but she does not care. Hey, that's fine with me. I'm just here to check the trail camera. But here we go anyways. Here we go. Now let's see if we got any pictures. I'm sure we got some pictures. Oh my lordy, we got 58 of them. Here we go. Let's see what we got. We're just gonna fly through them right here and see what we got. Okay. Nothing. Oh, whoa. What in the... Is that a turkey? Oh, never mind, guys. That's that's a beagle. That's a beagle. Not a turkey. Not a turkey. My bad. My bad. Okay, there's our first picture. Just a little scrawny looking doe. To be honest, I honestly think it's that doe right there. Okay, so like this doe literally just stood here for like 20 minutes in the same spot. Um, what? Is that a squirrel on her butt? Are you serious? Is that a squirrel on her butt? Am I seeing a squirrel right there on her butt? Am I seeing this right? Uh, what? I don't, I don't even know anymore, guys. I don't even know anymore. Like, bro, I'm not even lying. This doe stood here for 35 minutes. Out of the 58 pictures I have, she is 49 of them. Are you serious? Okay, here we go. Oh, that's the same doe, just a different time. Well, that was interesting. I mean, I guess I know that if I want to kill a doe, I should, you know, maybe set up a stand and set right here. I mean, I don't know. Like, she, she literally stood there for a day. Since we didn't get any pictures of Bucky, and that is honestly the only deer we're after right now, I'm going to take up the trail camera, take it off this tree, take it off this trail, and depending on what's on that sack, if it's good for deer, I might put me out a pile of whatever is in the sack and put the camera over it. Now, that's what you call baiting deer. All kinds of people around here do it with corn but to be honest i've just never really done much hunting like that i've always hunted off their travel routes from bedding areas to grazing areas but you got to start somewhere and depending on what's in that sack hey it may be today so now that we checked the trail camera i am about to reveal what is in this sack okay so originally whenever i got the package i was as confused as well a confused person but later that evening i contacted the man who sent it which is kevin so here's what i asked him i was basically just asking him like thanks a lot for the sack but I just don't have a clue what's in so it. So then he answered back and he told me exactly what it was and exactly what it's for. And exactly how to use it for that matter. But here we go. We're going to open it right now. Hey guys, come on over here. I don't bite often. But here we go. Actually, before I open it, I want to let y'all guess what it is. Let me tell you some characteristics. One, it's pretty heavy for what it is. Two, it's a super fine powder. Pretty fluffy. And it's not like sand, so it's not like gritty. It's just straight up soft. I don't know what to say, but, but I mean, to be honest, guys, I, I don't know how to explain this. But here we go. We're going to open it up. But anyways, here we go. We're going to open it up. Wow. wow. Okay, so here's some more hints, okay? It's brown. It's honestly about the only hint I can give you guys. It's brown. Okay, here we go. Go comment what you think it is. I'm giving the answer in five. Four, three, two, one. Okay, it is actually wheat meal. Now, if you have never heard of that in your life before, you are not alone because I'm right there with you. Now, you know, I've heard about cornmeal and, you know, stuff like that, but never wheat meal. But here's what it looks like right here. Just super fine stuff. Basically, to be, I don't know what this is. Like, maybe flour-like consistency. But it's just super soft. And what Kevin said to use it for... Is he said that deer love it, and he said to put it out about... Start putting it out about five days before you decide to hunt. And put out five pounds a day until you actually go hunt. Now, I was going to put the trail camera on this stuff. Stuff, until he told me that well it's really good to put before you go hunting now, since i don't really have a set date of when i'm gonna go hunting i'm gonna put out some corn on the camera so that we can see what we can get coming into the corn and then once we get the deer coming into the corn then five days before i go hunting i'll start putting out some of this wheat meal or at least that's the plan it's untelling how it'll work out and a lot of y'all are saying oh my gosh you're ruining your hunting you're going squirrel hunting when you could be deer hunting but guys to be honest i don't like going to deer hunt every single day like that's not me i like to be outdoors every single day but i don't necessarily necessarily like to deer hunt every single day. I like to really mix it up a lot. And for you guys who say I shouldn't be squirrel hunting on the same land that I'm hunting Bucky, well to be honest guys, if I had like a thousand acres, that wouldn't be such a problem. But I don't. I have a set amount of land and I'm going to use it for all it's good for. The rule I like to go off of is fun over fact. Now what that means is that I'm going to go for fun over fact. So even if the facts is that yeah, it's going to hurt my deer hunting a little bit, if it's worth it, if it's fun, if it's what makes me happy, I'm going to go for it. Because it doesn't matter how productive you are at something, if you're not having fun doing it, 
Okay. It's not gonna help you guys. I mean, I'm just I'm just here to say it. But now that I've gave you my speech, let's head on over and uh, yeah, what are we doing? We're setting corn on a trail camera. So now I'm in the woods, got the trail camera set up right here. Actually, the tree stand that I first shot Bucky is right there. And I'm thinking about setting the corn like, you know, right in here, like right in here. This is a fairly decent flat spot, you know, a good little rock for well, to look pretty, I guess. And then we're that far right there from the trail camera. That's a good distance to take pictures. So I'm gonna put me a good pile of corn right here. I don't know how I'm gonna do it and film with one hand, but I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? I guess I mean I'm just gonna put right there. I don't know how much, you know, to like put out. I don't I don't really do this often, so I'm not exactly an expert on how much corn to put out, but I'm gonna call that good for the first time and we'll adjust as we need it. So I mean I guess now there's a corn pile. There's the camera. We'll come back in about, I don't know, a few days or something, check it, maybe put more corn out if we need it. And uh well yeah, let's go shoot my bow and put those small game heads on. I got a milk jug, you know, it's sort of wanting to be shot right now, and I think I have the perfect opportunity to do it. I don't know if you've ever shot small game heads before, but I'm having a feeling it's gonna be pretty epic. The next day. Okay, so now we're out here, we're gonna try out the small game heads, but first, you know, I got a target set up like 20 yards or something like that. I'm gonna shoot my bow with regular field tips, make sure they still fly straight, and then we'll get right into those heads. And I do have my milk jug. Not to forget, you see this little wrist thing right here? Kevin, the same guy who sent that big sack of wheat meal, he sent me this right here, and boys, dang. Got the lime green accents right there, matches my D-loop, matches my ring in here, and matches my peep sock. So basically, this is a camo, black, and green bow. But anyways, here... Aw, oh, dang, just forgot. That arrow... It's fletching's gone. I don't know about these Eastern Axis arrows, I mean. Their veins come off. Like, I've shot these arrows 40 times, and I only have three arrows out of six left. But it looks like I still have one here that still has all the veins. But anyways, here we are, like 19, 20 yards. I'm just gonna shoot it, make sure it hits where I want to. Here we go, 20 yards with a normal field tip. All right, that is exactly where I want it. The Eastern Axis, you know, they shoot perfectly. They, they fly great, they're quick, they're everything good. Until, you know, something like hits the veins. Maybe it goes too far in a target or maybe another arrow hits it. Like the veins, they just shred. Like, they're, they're weak, guys. They're weak. And now right here, we're finally going to install the little small game heads. I'm going to put them on an arrow that, well, has a little vein trouble, but not much, but I just glued it back on. So, I'm not risking a completely arrow. But here is the field tip or the small game head, my bad. I think these are also called maybe judo points or judy points or something like that. I ain't sure. But they are super simple to install just simple you know just put it on there screw it in boom there you got yourself a small game head ready to stink and destroy a squirrel or rabbit or something and you may be looking at this head and wondering how does this thing kill i mean it doesn't look too sharp well i can tell you right now it's really not sharp but what it is is it does have a pretty big surface area of where it can grab something and if you look closely it's got like these four paper clip like there's a lot stronger than paper clips but you know and they're like little prongs so that whenever they grab something well, they grab it pretty good. Now, I'm not certain, but by using my brain, what I think this does is that whenever I say you got an animal right here, okay, when the, instead of coming through and like shredding it and cutting it like a normal broadhead does for deer, it'll come over here, and even if maybe one prong gets it, that one prong's gonna maybe dig in a little bit, and then, well, smash your squirrel into whatever's behind your shoot. So, I'm pretty sure this broadhead just kills off brute force rather than like, you know, actually cutting them. So, let's say my arm's a tree right here, and you got a squirrel here. Whenever you shoot the squirrel, basically, this arrow is pinning it up against that tree so hard that the squirrel just dies. Now, I've never seen one in use but i know they work because if they didn't work they probably wouldn't be selling them but anyways first things first i'm just gonna shoot it like honestly guys i'm gonna shoot it directly into the target because with these springs it's sort of got springs on it i don't know we're gonna try it we're just gonna shoot it at the target and then after i get done shooting it straight at the target i'm gonna milk jug and we're gonna stink and try to blow it up and these are actually 100 grains which is the exact ones that i'm practiced with so they should still be good on whenever i shoot this you'll probably hear a giant thud but well that's what i think let's just see what happens i'm honestly i don't i don't know what's gonna happen Oh my, oh dang, it dug in. My arrow was flying so fast that it actually like dug into the target. Oh dang, I didn't think it'd do that. Oh man. Wow, now that's crazy right there. It actually straight up dug in and it sure left a big hole. Let's see if it comes. Hey boys, it broke the target, but that target, you know, it's about time to get a new one. That one's old and well shot up. But my small game head's still good and ready to shoot the milk jug. Here we go with the milk jug. Now I'm sorry guys if this offends you, but this is not a milk jug. It's actually a water jug, but it's basically the same thing. I'm gonna set it like right there and well shoot it. I mean, it did hit exactly where I wanted to. I wasn't aiming for the lungs. I was basically aiming for the target, but the small game head did hit where I want. So I'm gonna aim right there on the jug and hopefully we can make it explode. Here we go, small game head versus milk jug. I'm actually going to zoom y'all in that way. Well, I, I believe it's going to like do some pretty explosive stuff. So I'm going to zoom y'all in pretty good on it. Okay, here we go. 20 yards, small game head versus milk jug. 
Oh, dang it. It went straight through. We can even shoot it again. That's a clean kill right there, guys. That's a clean kill. It went straight through a milk jug. It didn't even knock it over. Look at that, guys. The water's still in it. It just went in right there and out right here. And my arrow's right over here. The good thing about those... Oh, well, dang. That's pretty trashed up, isn't it? Well, my small game head's pretty bent up. All the paper clip, all the prongs, they're bent back. But I'm sure I can just bend them back forward. Here we go, guys. This time, I'm aiming center mass. Hopefully, I can straight up blow this thing up. But here we go. 20 yards, small game head versus milk jug. Take two. Oh yeah, that was a good one. He's pouring the blood. Or water. Oh yeah, straight in through there. That just straight up destroyed that thing. Then here's the exit wound, a little bit bigger, but look at there. That's that's a pretty good kill right there. Ain't many squirrels or rabbits surviving that, I can tell you that for sure. And right now my bow's actually on like 64 pounds. That, you don't need that to kill a squirrel, guys. That's overkill. You could honestly kill a squirrel with probably like 30 pounds. Like, there's no need to be shooting 60 pounds. The only reason I'm still shooting 60 pounds is because that's what I'm going to be using for deer. And, you know, might as well just go ahead and practice with it. If y'all like this video and like to watch me shoot my bow and check trail cameras and all that good stuff, go ahead and subscribe because there will be plenty more coming, I promise, guys. So if you're not already and you like the video, go ahead and subscribe. It helps a lot guys but besides that roll the outro if you're not part of the gray gang go ahead and subscribe by hitting the button on the top right and feel free to watch some of my past videos on the left as always favorite squad post it up down low if you want some of this sweet merch head on over to kennelgray1.com or the link in the description but besides that i'll catch you later in tomorrow's video